Welcome to another Cold Painting Table tutorial. Today we're looking at uh, taking a look at Ur 25 from Blackstone Fortress. Okay, so we have Ur Prime Black, uh, and I'm going to give him basically an all over coat here uh, using Vallejo Model Air's Pale uh, Blue. Uh, it's had a lot of different names over the years. I'm pretty sure that's what it is currently right now. This is what it says in my bottle. It could be Pale Gray Blue as well, depending on how old of a pot you have. Uh, but it gives you that weird quasi blue, quasi gray color that we uh, we saw in the original um, studio. Uh, paint scheme for Ur here. Our first highlight is using Vallejo model color Verdigree. Now it's not really a, a paint, it's more of a of, of an effect paint if you think like the GW's uh, like Blood for the Blood God, Nilak Oxide and such, uh, but it's just like a step brighter. It looks really white underneath the light here. It's not that bright. Uh, you do need to, to thin it out a fair bit to make it work though. And our last highlight that we're going to use is actually just plain white. Uh, I'm using it sparingly because I don't want it to look that clean. We're going to go ahead and dirty him up because he was just a big robot found in uh, the hold of a spaceship. Um, but just to give it one last little bright pop, um, we're going to hit white in all the upper areas. And again, I have pretty bright lights that I'm working with. That's why it's shining so much uh, as we're painting this guy. Okay, um, now instead of pre-shading this guy um, and then doing all the highlights, I'm doing it backwards, so just to see it a slightly different way, I'm going with a finer detailed airbrush, uh, this is Sotar 2020 Slim, um, and I'm painting in shadows. Uh, here we're using Vallejo's uh, Black Gray, um, and you can see that you can be pretty precise with what you're aiming for, so the cool thing is on the front of his chest you have all those, those contours um, and all those, those curved areas, uh, so we're just hitting underneath all of those uh, sections to add on depths of shade. Now we're going to go in uh, with some pigments later as well, um, but this is just allowing us to put in some proper shades as we're going across here. Uh, if for any reason, like, I think I, I missed one, missed a section underneath his backpack, uh, I'll just go and hit it again later. Um, it's not awful to go ahead and, and just like, oh hey, missed something, you can go ahead and fix it uh, and it should be okay for you. So underneath the shoulder pads, underneath the gun, underneath the backpack, uh, in his quasi-robo groin, whatever you want to hit with a, a little bit of a darker shade here, uh, we're doing that. I am a fan of hazard stripes, um, and this was just uh, kind of a two-part thing for me. One, um, I wanted to change up his scheme a little bit from the, the standard studio scheme, uh, so I wanted to put some, some hazard markings on there. Uh, and number two, um, it also reminded me how terrible I am at drawing straight lines with the paintbrush. So right now we're just hitting um, his front casing, uh, I'm assuming that's where his engine is, <laughs> with uh, the solid yellow from scale 75. We're also going to do his gauntlet, which is orange in the studio schemes. We're going to do that in yellow here because I like that as a spot color. And then we'll also do the guard around the minigun um, in the solid yellow as well. So it'll take a couple coats because yellow is super translucent, even over top of something as bright white like uh, uh, our, our base colors here. Uh, we'll just take our time and get it done right. I try to stay away from shading yellows with oranges, um, unless I need something to actually be orange and then it turns into a highlight. So here we're going to shade um, the all the yellow areas that we hit. We also did a piece of the backpack um, in yellow as well uh, with Reichlin Flesh Shade. Um, yellows shade to browns, they don't change to oranges, um, unless you're trying to go for something that's that's an orange color, not a yellow color. Um, so just be aware of that if you're trying to figure out how you should be shading things. Um, like if I would have used like uh, Fugan orange shade or whatever it's called from GW here, uh, it would have looked like he was covered in like 
actual red hair, like, like, that's the color that we would probably get out of that, like, a redhead, a ginger, not like, um, a dirty yellow that's been sitting in the hold of a spaceship for ungods, unknown centuries. And here we can go back into it, um, starting to reclaim that area with uh, skill 75 Sol Yellow. Um, don't just hit everywhere with it. Um, here you can see me trying to layer along um, the middle uh, and then like the, the, the top edge of it. That's where I'm concentrating my paint. I want that that, that dirtier section um, to be in the middle of the the areas that we just shaded essentially. Um, so let the yellow dry, um, nice and thin. Um, and then keep going around uh, piece by piece as it thins. Concentrate on the areas that you want to be more of a concentrated yellow. As I realized I say concentrated twi uh, twice there, but as in like you want that thicker layer to cover up the shaded areas um, so that we can get a nice solid yellow color. Okay, um, and now here's the, the, the place where I really realized I made a mistake, because um, I started off feeling okay. I'm like, hey, I drew a line using Scale 75's flat black, or whatever black you prefer. I really like Scale 75's, and I really like uh, Vallejo model color black, um, because they're just perfect. Uh, but anyways, I shouldn't have been lazy, I shouldn't have been in a rush, I should have just cut out some strips of uh, masking tape, nice and thin, put them down, painted around those, and it would have been fine. But this is me uh, realizing that I don't have the spatial recognition to draw a line. But that's okay. We all learn. Right on, with the hazard striping done, it's time to start putting in all the other colors that are on this guy, which is mostly metal. So we're going to use Scale 75's black metal to hit all the joints, the gears, um, anything that should be uh, a metallic will be this color. Um, at this point in time, I'm just going to note that I do realize I didn't um, repaint the Aquila. Uh, I do go back and do that in the ev end eventually, I just can't remember where I got that one on film. Uh, but here, we can really start getting definitions of the robot by adding in black metal.
Okay, first highlight for the metal uh, is going to be Skill 75's Heavy Metal, um, which is their equivalent to, I don't know, Lead Belcher? Maybe? I think that's the color? can't remember off the top of my head for the GW stuff. But we're just focusing on the, the top parts of, of everything here. Um, think about where the light should be hitting. Um, so it's cool with the um, magazine um, banner tube. Um, you can really uh, change the way that's going to look depending on where the, uh, the light's hitting. Um, top of the knuckles of the power claw, top of all the weird circle things that are going along, um, all across him, uh, his little light fixtures on your shoulders, etc. And then our last highlight here for the metal is going to be using Scale 75 Speed Metal. Um, it's pretty bright, guys. Um, I would equate this to like a very, very bright silver. Um, Mithril Silver was the last like, silver I used from GW Paints, if you're trying to think that long ago. I think Stormhost Silver would be an equivalent nowadays, uh, but I'm not off the top of my head. I'm not totally sure. But we can be really specific in where we want our uh, highlights here to be. So taking a look at that, like the top rim here, that little edge, uh, maybe a couple of the top pieces of the uh, uh, magazine, magazine feed, that's what I'm thinking of, that's the word. Um, where you can just go on the outside of all the little contours on that piece, the top piece of this power supply for the claw, um, etc. Okay, two things here. Um, I hit all the metal areas with non oil gloss. Uh, I didn't get film of it, but that's okay. Um, but more importantly, here we, we put a, a little dish with some water in it um, and some of the uh, secret weapon dark earth dipping. Come on, get back in the frame. There we go. And we're hitting any areas that we think that dirt would have collected with this wash. Now, if you've never used pigments, they're super fun um, because they dry and then you can still move them around afterwards. They're like oil paints, but you don't have to worry about um, using like white spears to move them around afterwards. Uh, they do give a little bit of a chalky effect because they are literally just pigments that you would have in a paint without. Um, the matte medium that the paint, so the pigments would be sitting in. So if you really want to make your own paint, you could just put in this pigment, matte medium water, you literally get paint at that point. But we're drawing it all along here. Now there's a couple of ways that you could move around the pigments once they're dry. Here I'm just using a brush with a little bit of water. Uh, so I'm basically picking it up off his feet, moving around where I want it to be. Um, so it's not everywhere. If that doesn't work out too well, you can always grab a, uh, a cotton bud. And I think I grab one here as well um, to help push around and clean up the areas that we don't want to be dirty. Um, when you're using pigments, I suggest using them over top of a... Uh, uh, a matte varnish. I wouldn't use a gloss, I'd use a matte because they are a little bit stickier uh, and it allows you to move things around. So you can see that we're getting a nice good dirt effect, good gram effects going across them, and as it dries uh, it'll become a little bit more pale. And there we go, there's me with the, the cotton bud. Can just move a little bit faster. Um, it's not as a precision tool, um, which is cool because it'll stay away from any of the areas that the dirt would naturally be um, resting in uh, as we're going along.
it's all dry, I hit him with a matte uh, varnish, and out here I'm just going to go in with uh, Vallejo's uh, light red, um, and uh, hit both the visor as well as the headlight uh, and shoulder lights that he has along here. I do realize that I missed that shoulder light, and that's okay. Um, right afterwards, we're going to do the other lights using um, Escorpita Green um, by uh, Vallejo as well. To brighten up his headlight, um, or his belly button light, <laughs> uh, we're going to use slow yellow, just focusing on the middle of the, the light itself, uh, feathering it out so you can see me put on paint, and now I'm just going to try to feather out the, it along the edges of that uh, placement. Right on. We don't want to leave the grills of the light uh, unpainted, so we're going to hit those quick with Scale 75's Heavy Metal. Uh, and then immediately after this, we're going to go start in um, and just glazing and shading all the lights that we just did. So the green lights are hidden with uh, hit here with uh, Beel Tan Green, um, and then the uh, reds will be done with um, the blood Bloodletter uh, glaze that's done by GW. And here we are wrapping up the model. Um, we're going to go in and just get that last little tube that's next to the power claw. Uh, purple is a fun color for me, so I'm going to slap down some of Scale 75's violet. And all we're going to do is add in white to, to highlight it up. At the end, we'll get a nice uh, little front shot um, here of what uh, Ur looks like. As always, guys, if you enjoy the tutorial, please like, share, comment, subscribe, etc. Um, we're getting closer and closer and closer to the end of the um, uh, the Blackstone Fortress stuff. Um, so uh, I have Voil is coming up next, Taddeus is going to be up uh, in the next couple days as well, uh, and then we're going to go back to some baddies, and then we're going to wrap up the good guys with Diet Green and the Eldar chick, I um, can't remember what her name is, um, and then we'll start going into some other stuff. I have I have filmed Magor from Shadespire as well, so he's already basically done, I just need to get some time to edit him, we might intersperse some AOS there um, in between. Um, what we've been taking a look at. But thanks a lot for watching, guys, um, and please enjoy the last little bit of the uh, tutorial here. Have a good one.